Good evening from the nation's capital. I'm David Ake, and thank you so much for watching. Well, here we go, folks. We begin tonight with day one or day zero, depending on how you count it, of the 41st general election in the province of Quebec. Less than nine months after her government passed a fixed date elections law, Premier Pauline Marois violated that law today and had the lieutenant governor call an election for April the 7th. Marois senses the time is ripe to turn her minority government into a majority government that would, among other things, advance Quebec's sovereignist project, likely by having another referendum. Sun News reporter Giuseppe Valiente is our chief Quebec election correspondent. He's in Montreal tonight, and that's where we start. So I guess the first thing, uh, Giuseppe, is to fill us in, bring us up to speed on who did what, when, where today. Okay, well, we have first, of course, the Parti Québécois was its leader, uh, Pauline Marois, launched the election today. It will be 33 days. And uh, she said this morning that uh, the opposition is blocking her vision, blocking her project, the projects of the Parti Québécois. Uh, part of that, of course, is the secularism charter. And she said she needs the tools uh, with which to push forward her vision uh, for the province. Now, when she says she wants the tools, she means she wants a majority. When she said the opposition is blocking her vision, it means she thinks the timing is right to get that majority. Uh, the polls say... Uh, the polls are on her side to a certain extent. Our poll, uh, it's a Leger poll, came out today, put the PQ at 37%, the Liberal Party at 35%. Uh, the Parti Québécois will uh, run uh, an election uh, based primarily, based heavily on identity politics, as I'm sure uh, you, know, you are uh, well aware about that. The PQ says that they're the only party capable of protecting uh, Quebec culture, uh, Quebec language, um, and uh, in, in relaunching um, Quebec's economy. Uh, now, of course, then you have the Liberal Party uh, second place at 35 percent. They have 49 seats in the legislature. You need 63 for a majority. Philippe Couillard, the leader of the Liberal Party this morning, gave a really fiery speech. He actually said, David, that he hated the Parti Québécois. He said he detested the PQ because the PQ makes Quebecers out to be, according to him, uh, weak uh, pathetic to a certain extent, needing the government to help them, always in danger. And he said, uh, and this is something that might be foreshadowing or might foreshadow a theme in his campaign. It, it seems to me at least that he tried to take a little bit of the identity card away from the PQ by saying that a strong economy and good jobs does wonders for, for Quebec identity. You know, the identity becomes stronger as well if you have a really good job. So that's something interesting to look for uh, during the campaign, how the Liberals try to take that identity card away from the Parti Québécois and focus on the economy as well. Um, and the, the uh, Philippe, Philippe Couillard also uh, brought out the, the, the referendum card. He said, uh, if, if the PQ returns to power, make no mistake, there will be a referendum. Uh, finally, the CAQ, its leader, uh, uh, um, um, François Legault, excuse me, uh, did not have a very good day today as well. Uh, today, the poll showed his party 15% in voting intention. And also, one of his well-known MNAs, an incumbent MNA, said that she's not running in the election. Uh, and so that's, you know, she said that today. It's not, not a very good, not a very piece of good news either. Uh, the CAQ said uh, their campaign will be about taxes. François Legault said, my party will cut taxes. The other two parties will raise your, 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 your taxes. One more thing I want to mention. David is that um, he also he also um, he also talked about uh, uh, the fact that um, uh, well I'm sorry I'm, I'll, I'll stick to, to taxes for now he will ra he will cut taxes and the other two parties uh, will will raise the, the taxes so we'll see how that plays uh, with the Quebec electorate each party of course as you know Giuseppe is trying to fight the election on its own terms you're right uh, PQ wants identity politics the other parties want to fight it on economic grounds taxes uh, you know the the vrais affaires as uh, they say in the slogan for uh, uh, for the Liberals. But there are some other things sort of hanging over this campaign. Uh, one of them, of course, has got to be uh, the Charbonneau Commission. I, I, and fill us in on, on what's happening there, where uh, all this, this is the main corruption inquiry in Quebec, where this is all fitting in uh, to this particular campaign. Right, absolutely. I mean, during the, during the past year in Quebec, you had the, really the, the debates around the secularism charter, and you had all of the uh, major headlines, the scandals coming out of the construction inquiry regarding the mafia and the construction industry, the illegal financing of political parties. So what the um, commissioners of the inquiry said today is that they will suspend the inquiry uh, during the campaign. I have a quote uh, from the uh, commissioners. Uh, I think that we have that for you guys over here. It said, uh, elections are the touchstone of democracy, and the commission does not want to influence the electorate in one way or another and I think you can imagine uh, you know pretty easily how one witness could say something unsubstantiated uh, not proven in court um, and really throw throw off you know a part of the campaign so uh, not not a big surprise there 
All right, Giuseppe Valiente in Montreal, and you'll be here for the next 34 days. We've got lots and lots of things to get to, but uh, great start. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now, as I mentioned, 34 days until we count the votes. Well, uh, let's back up uh, to uh, last uh, September 2012, or just September 2012, and uh, see where everybody starts. Uh, Quebec's 40th general election. Uh, we see that the uh, Parti Québécois at 54 votes. The PLQ, and you will hear this, the PLQ is the Parti Libéral de Québec, 50 seats. That's a pretty thin minority. 19 seats for the coalition, uh, Avenue de Québec, the CAQ. And uh, down there, Quebec Solidaire got uh, two seats. Uh, that is the way the seats broke down. Then we're in the f we take a look at the vote share. Very narrow. And when we started the, the last campaign, uh, you know, everyone thought, oh, well, Jean Charest's liberals, they're old, they're tired, they're going to get thumped. Not really, lost, but just missed less than 1% of the popular vote. Uh, very narrow result when you look at that. Uh, and go down the coalition avenue to, is at 27%. Voter turnout, a very healthy, very respectable 74.5%. So that is where they, that's where they finished up the last time Quebecers went to the polls. That's where we start today, essentially, the, the scorecard. Now let's see about those poll numbers that Giuseppe talked to, our man David Coletto, CEO of Abacus Data. Um, let's talk about the, po the poll that Leger was in the field just, uh, what, the last few days before the call. These are pretty fresh numbers. They're fresh. And... Uh, we can see why Marois decided to break her fixed election. Absolutely, state on, the, on the on the you know he headline of the Journal de Montreal is you know majority in 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 view right. because um, it, it, what will be interesting is the PQ has a two point lead right thirty seven percent of, of decided voters say they'd vote for the PQ thirty five percent for the Liberals and the CAQ down at fifteen percent. Now our viewers are saying, well that's that's really close. How is that possibly going to be a majority? Well, if we look at the next board in Quebec, when you're understanding elections in Quebec, you have to really look at the difference between those who speak French mm -hmm. and those who don't speak French. And you can see it's, it's, it's very much two different worlds, that the PQ has opened up a substantial 23-point lead among Francophone voters. That's the largest block of voters by far in the province. Um, and, 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 that's, the and they often decide elections because they're spread out enough across the province that if you win among that group and if you win big, you just generally win more seats. You and I, and we've often talked about vote being efficient and inefficient. The Quebec Liberals, the classic case of a tremendously inefficient vote. Fum. They yep. all in Montreal and nowhere else. And the Francophone vote, which is the PLQ yep. vote, or the PQ vote, spread out around, <laughs> very efficient, spread out all over the place. So yeah, and, and those numbers suggest why how effective the social charter has been. Because mm -hmm. what you've seen, if you compare the first poll from the last campaign, the PQ is doing six points better among Francophones, and the Liberals are doing substantially better among non-Francophones. So it's actually polarized... That's the wedge. Polarized voters based on their language, based on their ethnicity, and, and that's why right now, if the, if the polls right and it holds, Parlene Marois is in a good position to not only get reelected as a minority government, but even win a majority. And, and though we don't have these numbers, I mean, I think it's safe to say we should, you know, just think about where we were before the Charter of Values showed up. All the parties, you know, say eight months ago, were in a bit of a, you know, just fumbling yeah. around. Everybody, there wasn't really any separation. But it's really been the Charter of Values that has forced that separation. And what's interesting is, is the big loser has actually been the CAQ, who's mm -hmm. gotten squeezed out because they're they're uh, they're they're soft nationalists, um, you know, more conservative, but took a, a sort of middle ground position on the social charter, wanted to get it over with and get it done with. And you can see that they've lost non-Francophones to the Liberals and that Francophones, you know, if, if they want to go ahead with like a, a party that's yeah. going to stand up for, you know, the Quebecois people and then the French language, they may not vote CAQ anymore. They may go to the PQ. So it, it certainly squeezed them in the middle. All right. What, what, we've got some other data yeah, on the Yeah, just a few leadership. other points. Um, best Premier. We talk about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Similar to the, the vote intention numbers, right? Um, Pauline Marois has a, a two-point lead on this question over uh, Liberal leader Philippe Couillard. Interesting, because, you know, when, when Philippe Couillard became Liberal leader, he came out swinging. The Liberals were well ahead in the polls. He was seen as a strong leader. He's had some difficulties. Um, and... and um, we see alignment with, uh, between vote intention and this question. Last interesting point from this poll, I think, is who do you think is going to win? Start of the campaign, who do Quebecers think Regardless will win? Regardless of who you're voting for, who do you think is actually going to win? 46%, almost a majority, think the PQ is going to win. Yeah. That is, I, I think that's telling for the CAQ. Because you're going to see Philippe Couillard out there saying to, to, to CAQ supporters, 44% of whom, their second choice is the Liberal Party, mm -hmm. saying if you want to stop the PQ, don't vote. There's for only one Francois way to do Legault, it. 
vote for the Liberal Party, and, and that's I and think. Th this is the this is the kind of poll result that validates that strategy for the Liberals and the CAQ voter mm -hmm. going, yeah, maybe I should just, yeah. you know, CAQ, they got no hope. Yeah. And they they even if you took took a look at it, and the CAQ, this is an interesting uh, election as well because uh, the C this is only the CAQ's second election. They were trying to present themselves as let's break through this, this stasis yeah. of Liberal versus PQ. Not bad last time out, but sort of well, underperformed. I mean, they I, got I think they did well. Seats. They got twenty-seven percent of the vote. Yeah, that's right. Yep, exactly. But they, if they don't do better, uh, well, and it, time I to think pack you have to in. remember what what the conditions were. The political environment in the last election was around scandal and corruption. Mm -hmm. There's still some of that, but the PQ have been able to change the channel to the point where the CEQ was that protest vote, that fresh voice in the legislature. Now. They, they sort of don't have a clear position on that polarizing social charter. Yep, bingo. All right, David Coletto, thank you so much. And Thanks, you'll be by, of course, to walk us through yeah, uh, absolutely. lots of fun stuff.